Please join me in the pledge. this time we're going to recognize our employees of the month. Yep. Ashley, is she, she'll be right back. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. This is a perfect opportunity to thank everybody for being here. Um, we don't have open forum, anybody for the open forum, so we'll go ahead and just uh, wait momentarily for Ashley. As we're waiting for Ashley, so I'll just break the silence. So I think as, you know, as we think through, I was just walking up with one of our uh, teachers, and as we continue to celebrate, it's, it's definitely aligned to our vision and our mission as we move forward. It's celebrating the excellence and just the pride of walking upstairs and, and a little bit of nerves, but just acknowledging the fact that you know, our teachers and our staff show up each and every day and provide excellence uh, for our, our students and our community that we serve. It's also, as we think, move into the summer break, it's well-deserved. You see a lot of things on social media about how teachers just need that time, but it is time to reflect, uh, recenter ourselves, and even here centrally, which you'll hear in my report. But it's, it, it was an amazing year with, with our, our staff, and I know they put in a lot of dedicated time, so it's, it's greatly appreciated. So it's always nice to celebrate um, our staff uh, during this time. So. Uh, we'll be celebrating, recognizing those momentarily. In the meantime, I guess we can listen to a rain. It's just, just, just exactly what we need more of is, is more rain. <laughs> So Ashley, we already introduced you, so yeah. Casey is also a Lakeview staff member, um, an April 2024 employee of the month. This is what her nominator wrote about her. Casey goes above and beyond for her students and her colleagues. She is always finding engaging ways to get the students moving and working together. She is such a positive role model, which is easily to see in the young faces she brights up each day. Students are always happy and excited to see her and get to work in her space. Casey also does a great deal to motivate her colleagues in keeping a positive mindset. So Casey, congratulations. We do have another employee of the month. Um, she is going to be recognized in July. And then Tyler, if you wouldn't mind, might be the first employee in history to get the uh, double award. Uh, we have a traveling trophy at Southwest, too, that uh, staff <laughs> nominating Liz actually won that this year as well. So 
Um, it's great to see that all of the things that Liz does um, is getting recognized as well. So here's what her nominee wrote. She works hard with the students in Mrs. Dollum's room. She does some backbending work and keeps going with the students. She does an amazing job with them. She has patience and kindness with the students and they all seem to like her very much. So thank you, Liz. Thank you. Congratulations to all those employees. Our next item is item four, approval of today's agenda. This is an action item. Is there a motion? Uh, before we approve to uh, move on, I just got a request here. I'm looking at the consent items in here. I feel like um, item 5-9 probably shouldn't be bundled in in the consent items. Okay. I have a request to move that out and be voted on separately, discussed on separately. Sure, we, can you hang on to that? No, nope, I'm just kidding. Yeah, because <laughs> we'll approve the agenda, and then okay. when we get to consent, you can well, make that request. I thought I needed to request it before the approval happened, so that's why I was... When we get to consent, it has to Got be. It. Yeah, yeah. So now we're just approving the, the flow of the agenda, and so then... Moved. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Great, thanks. So, consent items, number five. <laughs> Now, now, I, request, now yeah. I would like to request to move 5-9 uh, out of the consent items and into a separate discussion and vote, please. Sure. It has been requested by Davey to go ahead and move 5.9 out of the consent items. We'll now make that 5.1A. Darcy. It's as it's written, 5.9, so good question. 5.8 is no longer in consent, so it would be 5.9 still, but we didn't make that change on the agenda, so we'll, we'll say it's 5.9, we'll move to 5.1a. Good question. Now, um, consent item is, items is an, an action item, with excluding 5.9 and 5.8 and moving 5.9 to 5.1a. Is there a motion? So Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. So now we will take 5.1a, superintendent salary for the 2024-25 school year. David, you asked for this to be pulled out of consent. Please share with us. Just, I just, um, I think that right now it seemed on like an odd topic to be involved in with a big group of 18 other items. So I just kind of thought it would be nice to have a separate discussion with a separate vote on it instead of including it in a large group. With, with that, I don't know if this calls for motion, but maybe the, I, I, I'd like to make a motion just to table it to August to the regular meeting, and then that way gives a little more time to go through some stuff that we have and, you know, maybe delineate through what we're looking at. So that would be <clears throat> my motion just to uh, just to move it to the, uh, to table it tonight and move it to the August regular meeting. Give the entire board a little more time to work on it. Or look at it. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor of moving 5.1A to to our to Oh yes. Yes. Is there any discussion? Dave, could you elaborate when you say stuff to look at? What do we do I, I just yeah, no, that's fine. I appreciate it. just want to take a look at the overall financial picture that we're working on. It just seems to be a <clears throat> as we've cut some finances from our district, we're kind of adding them back in, and I understand it's a contract, but it's also a contract that, uh, uh, you know, like I said, I just uh, we, we cut, what, $1.2 million out, and we'd be adding that back in, and I don't know if that was another position to save or what. So that's what mm -hmm. I was thinking, just financials. Okay. So I might add, um, this what we're discussing is the superintendent's contract is a three-year contract. Two years was established. This is the third year um, that was going to be uh, to be determined. Um, I have a couple concerns about tabling it. Um, 
The one would be that this would start July 1st. Um, and so we would be after, we'd, we'd be behind schedule as it relates to that. Um, the second is that while yes, we did have to make cuts, um, I think what we've proposed is a modest increase, less than cost of living for our superintendent of schools. All right, I had seconded this just because my thought process is that it, to me it makes sense to do the evaluation first, which is going to be our very next meeting before we would determine a salary increase. Um, the feedback I've gotten from talking to people over the weekend is that you should do the evaluation and then discuss the salary, not vote on the salary increase the meeting before the evaluation. So I don't think it would, you know, in the private sector, I think it would, this would be the proper order evaluation and then the salary increase. So that's my thought process. I'd like to look at that. And then I would just say too, I, th I think it's common with their other contracts to determine them later if needed and then there's back pay if needed. So I don't see that as being an, an issue. It was the same thing Angie mentioned about as we've retroactive other contracts. So. We could retroactive that too, that wouldn't be a problem. I do believe that in our notes to the board, it was, it, we, we were sh shared where it lands within the big nine, but you're right, we don't know as, as it relates to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any comments? No. Um, no, I would just add that it does make, it does make sense that an evaluation happens first and if we're going to if we're going to look at information like Dave is suggesting that we look examine district finances, to me now we're adding uh, performance review. Um, I echo your interest in examining Big Nine and see if we are competitive because that's my desire as well. Is that I don't want to be at the bottom of the Big Nine in anything when it comes to uh, how we're uh, compensating staff. Okay, I'll call for the, the vote. All those in favor of tabling 5.1a and adding it to the July board meeting signify by saying, or did you say August? August, I said August, give us yep. time. Yep. August board meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries six to one. Now we're on to reports, Superintendent Wagner. So good evening, uh, thank you Madam Chair, directors, uh, teacher representatives and community and those online. Uh, it was nice again, I just wanna reinforce the excellence of our staff and, and thank them for an amazing year. Uh, so it was great to recognize them uh, this evening. To center us in our mission and vision and going with our vision this evening, inspiring learners and cultivating growth to positively impact our community. And with that, you know, as we think about the summer work, and I know that, you know, it is about, you know, our teachers and our staff recentering themselves, but as we think about here centrally, we still continue to work, and we're planning forward for, for next year. And one of the key components, we're going to continue to work on our strategic plan. Darcy, you want to go to the next? 
and really staying focused on what does that look like. And now that our strategic plan is codified, we're looking at our operational plan. And with that, we take the operational plan and we start a, um, by de department, division, as well as schools, we're aligning our action cards. So from our operational plan, from our vision, what does that look like to ensure that we're moving our strategic plan forward? So the, the staff right currently are working on their action cards, and those action cards will codify you know, where we are in the work, and then what does our work look like for moving forward, and who's in charge, who's sponsoring that, and what does that collaborative work look like underneath? So it is some exciting work, but it, in those, those action cards then will drive as we our work moving forward, and then during study sessions, we'll report back up to the board on our progress. How do we know our work aligned to the strategic plans having impact on student, staff, and community experience? To give you an idea, and then I apologize, this is challenging to read, Darcy printed off a copy for you. This gives you an idea of Executive Director Franks and one of her action cards that she's currently working on. And when you look at the strategic direction, that is aligned to our vision. So along our vision, we have strategic directions in which we'll essentially lay out the work that we're doing. So from that, then we start saying, okay, what does the work look like? Who needs to be involved? And you see it unpacked here. And then as we move forward, and then it timelines that out. So this becomes a work from the executive directors, from our building principals, and our downlines from our executive directors, and ensure that we are aligned to our strategic plan. Buildings then will take their action cards, and that will become their school improvement plan. So that will be baked into their school improvement plan, and then the action cards will go into the department plans, which will then be aligned to our strategic plan. So essentially, uh, to summarize, we're taking our strategic plan, and really that is our guiding light, our North Star, which we've spoke to for over a year, and then the work underneath is what we're currently doing. And those are the, the action cards that uh, we're currently in place right now and the work that we're doing on top of planning for, and I know I'll, I'll kind of say this quietly, planning for next year already and the welcome back. Uh, it'll be here before you know it. So that's some current, some work that we're doing now. Um, and we'll, once these action cards get codified, you'll see more of this through our study se sessions next year. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Wagner. Let's start with Neil. Oh, well, well. Uh, of an, uh, an executive director. I'm sort of the Darcy of the. Uh, of the Education Foundation, I do all the routine tasks, checking the mail, making deposits, keeping records, minutes, and so on. So we, we uh, had a meeting last Wednesday, and uh, probably the biggest outcome of that meeting was we need to uh, redirect our focus on, on uh, communicating to scholarship players, donors, people who uh, have uh, have uh, been responsible for establishing various scholarships. We need to do a better job of communicating with them and uh, informing them of the status of their endowment, their, their invested funds that generate scholarships for our graduates, and uh, <clears throat> uh, solicit uh, recommendations from them on perhaps changes in criteria for, for uh, being eligible for their scholarships. Uh, what the amount should be, how many students should get it. Uh, it. Let them know when the awards assembly is so that they could be in attendance if they want, offer them an opportunity to present the scholarship, uh, those sort of things. And, and we've done that in the past, but we've been a little sloppy, and, and it is our dedicated goal to improve on that. Um, uh, we also uh, talked about uh, better communications with the public, letting the public know what the foundation is doing, uh, what, what the, our programs uh, are, and uh, when they take place, uh, and the possibility of, uh, of establishing a, a newsletter or re-establishing one, uh, and uh, the face of things, uh, uh, changes 
radically in recent times with the um, information age. And so newsletters look a little different now than they used to. And I talked to the superintendent this morning and suggested maybe we could collaborate with the district on their newsletters. And that's, I think that has a lot of promise. We'll work out details of how that might work. Uh, but, I, but I'm thinking that might be, be good for both the district and, and the foundation. Uh, teacher grants are coming up. Uh, the deadline for application is 20th of this month. And, uh, and we, I have 13 uh, very good applications. I got a couple last week. And uh, Gary and Lila Oz and I will go over those applications shortly. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the progress that we're making in terms of the Pathways to Success program, which involves honoring distinguished alumni and distinguished educators. That event is going to be at the Wedgwood Cove on October 10. And we have a, a good field of honorees that have been uh, le legitimately nominated and, uh, and uh, uh, we're in the process of the board uh, approving those nominations. And there are four uh, distinguished alumni, four distinguished educators, and uh, it's, it's, it, I'm excited about those candidates. Um, it's going to be an interesting reception. That's it. I attended my first ever facilities committee meeting. Uh, Bruce and Davey were there also. And uh, for some reason, I was expecting facilities committee meetings to be very boring. But they weren't. They were very interesting. And uh, Paul did a good job of explaining everything, which he'll talk more about tonight. Um, and I just briefly wanted to mention, I'm not on the policy committee at this moment, but I had submitted a policy proposal, um, which I mentioned a couple of times earlier this year. And I believe that was visited about today at the policy meeting, so I just wanted to say thank you, and um, I appreciate the consideration and look forward to any feedback, so. Good, well, and it's a, been a quieter time compared to May. Boy, May is just <laughs> oh, super crazy, but um, just to continue with the dialogue about policy, we did uh, meet and had a good discussion about how new policy ideas could be introduced for consideration. And that's going to be an ongoing discussion, but I think we discovered the need for um, perhaps that there's a gatekeeping function that can be shared with the superintendent, but, a lot, but including the board chair and also uh, the committee. Because we have, a, to me, a highly engaged policy committee that takes its role very seriously. And I, I would, I feel confident in saying our poly policies are pretty current. And so uh, Angie's idea has spurred that discussion and then we'll continue to examine how, how does that, what are the mechanics of introducing new policy and giving some guidance and some, pol and some procedure to that to aid a parent or a teacher or a board member to introduce policy uh, for our consideration. Um, a couple related items, I did attend the cannabis zoning meeting, Ron, you were there, and I went there principally just to make, because they were talking about zoning for cannabis, retail cannabis sales, and uh, left there with a firm understanding that our schools are going to be isolated and, and not in any close proximity to any kind of cannabis sales facility, and that was the assurance from the city planner, and that was really why I attended. Um, boy, this is getting out in the fringes, but I went to the Twins makeup game last night, and they won, but the first pitch was thrown out by the president of MSBA, and he didn't even have to step up five. Uh, he made it, got it across the plate, and it was straight. And then I also want to add that the value of having updates from staff, um, this is a seed of an idea that involves the foundation. But when the two advisors updated us last month about the annual and the Alahas, and they, and they told us it's $100 to purchase a yearbook, I mean, that's out of reach for a number of our students. And so I just planted the seed with Kim and Neil about perhaps could the foundation provide some kind of support to kids so they could purchase a yearbook. I mean, I kind of find that breaks my heart to think a kid can't leave here as a senior with a, a yearbook, or I'm not, I mean, it could be other grades as well, but I think that it's a worthy consideration for 
the foundation. Thank you, Gary. Dave. All right, we had a, a finance committee meeting. Gary was there too, he saved it for me. Paul and Jennifer went through our um, final budget and proposed for 25, which was very interesting. Um, and they'll cover that here totally shortly. Um, and then uh, we had an MSBA meeting, and I think we all received an email on it too about our August meeting. I think it's, believe it's just a Monday. It's not like a full session up there, but they do have some opportunities for uh, uh, phase one and phase two also at another time. So just bring it up. It has not traditionally been done by our board. I know we're gonna have a retreat, so that's gonna be a little different too, but just throwing that out there. And then Gary, since you brought it up, for seniors, I think it's a great idea. It's a wonderful idea. That's all. All right. I get yep. So I also attended the facilities meeting, which I agree. I, they are uh, very interesting to me, and I'm learning a lot more about the buildings than I thought that I would. Um, we went through talking about, we saw some pictures of removing some old boilers and seeing how, what the, how much room was left in there after how big they were, um, talking about solar panels, and uh, it was actually, it was very interesting. Um, one thing I'm excited for is, Paul had mentioned that uh, our next one could possibly visit um, one of the schools, is it like an offsite meeting, which uh, I'm really looking forward to doing that too. Um, yep, and then just got out of a, the policy committee meeting that was, uh, we talked about adding in a couple of new policies, so we'll have a few readings coming up with those getting mentioned up, uh, and then possibly removing one that kind of seemed like it wasn't necessary in there anymore. Um, and then yeah, two, the one regarding 208 got brought up. Um, it was nice discussion regarding like the difference between policy and procedure, and uh, we know what procedures we can follow to make sure that um, you know the policy reads correctly, and that all the right steps are taken um, to make sure that uh, requests are also met and answered correctly too. Um, again, I, we do. I think we have a very um, good group of people in there working together who are listening and very uh, vocal in there too. So it's nice to be a part of that. Yeah. Thanks, Davy. Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. I attended the Education Foundation meeting and I think Neil covered it pretty well, pretty thorough. Um, also, I was at the policy committee meeting and um, the, the other part is that Ashley shared with us is that sometimes, or maybe it was Tanya, sometimes in uh, the reference section of policies, it'll, it potentially will say, um, it may refer you to the procedure guide for that policy, and that might answer some of those questions as well. So we just love that we're having the dialogue about it and having the conversation. So thank you, Angie, for, for bringing it forward and giving us the opportunity to talk about it at the policy committee meeting. Um, Janice, you're next. We do not have students currently here, so we'll move down to nine, effective and efficient operations, 9.1, the resolution relating to the election of school board members and calling the school district general election. This is an action item, 
and presented by Ron. So yeah, the resolution in front of you, and this is uh, directly aligned to um, what we've done in the past. So I look and I ask the board to approve the resolution. Is there a second? second. All those in favor of approving the resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. 9.2 Long-Term Facility Management Plan. Paul Durbron is presenting. It will be an action item. All right, good evening. Chair Nelson, Board of Directors, Superintendent Wagner, thank you for having me here this evening. So, um, as Chair Nelson mentioned, this will be an action item at the conclusion of this presentation. We'll ask you to um, consider approving our recommendation for our 10-year um, long-term facility maintenance plan. Um, this plan, and, and part of what I'll start with is just a little bit of information about lo what long-term facility maintenance program um, is and some background, and then we'll dig into the weeds a little on what our plan will include. So um, school districts are required to adopt and approve a 10-year plan annually. So last um, June, you approved a 10-year plan at that time, and we'll do that annually as long as we are part of the LTFM uh, revenue program. Um, <clears throat> after we adopt the plan locally through our school board, we will then submit the plan to the commissioner at the Department of Education for approval at the state level. And these uh, approvals or our, our plans are due to MDE uh, by July 31st, hence bring it forward uh, this evening uh, to move it on that direction. So just two, um, a couple other points here that are important as we look at our plan this evening uh, for consideration. Um, requirements from the Department of Education state that we must include provisions for implementing a health and safety program that complies with the state regulations. And they, the plans also must indicate whether districts issuing or has issued bonds to finance any LTFM funding. So. Um, remember those two bullet points later. We'll hit those um, as we dig into our spreadsheet. Um, and for those of you that have been around education longer than, um, say, pre-2015, there used to be different programs, uh, also known as deferred maintenance or health and safety programs. Those in 2016 were combined to create our long-term facilities maintenance revenue program that we uh, are part of today. Uh, and these can fund, or LTFM, projects can be based out of our 01, our general fund, or our 06, our construction fund. So you'll see that broken down as well in our spreadsheet today. So uh, one other little piece of information before we start looking at the uh, aspects of our plan. Um, there, these are um, monitored and we, we're required to follow uh, or I guess there's a set of allowable uses for these um, funds. So it's a restricted fund. Deferred capital expenditures and maintenance projects that are necessary to prevent further erosion of facilities. And a term that's thrown around is when we replace something, like let's say a boiler or a light fixture, to use LTFM funds, it should be a like-for-like -like replacement. We shouldn't be using this to improve or um, add on or build something new to your schools. So it's basically to prevent erosion of your facilities and, and perform your maintenance tasks. Um, other allowable expenditures or uses increasing accessibility of school facilities, health and safety projects, remodeling or constructing single-use restrooms, and that's a newer addition to this uh, program. Not allowed are new construction or new facilities uh, or add-ons. Um, energy efficiency projects are not allowable either or violence uh, prevention or safety or security projects aren't allowed under LTFM. So at tonight's meeting, we'll take a quick snapshot of our 10-year plan. It is a very big beast. We won't be able to look at every detail this evening, um, but hopefully you see enough of this plan that you'll have confidence in approving it this evening. So we'll look at our LTFM spreadsheet, and you also have in your uh, materials that were in the board packet and printed for you this evening, a copy of a, a spreadsheet that includes both the 10-year capital plan and the LTFM spreadsheet together. So a summary basically of all facilities related projects over our 10-year plan. 
Um, on the printed materials on the front page, there's also some diagrams they'll be shown here on the slides in a moment. Um, those are including both capital and LTFM. So just be aware that if there may be a project that's with outside of those allowable expenditures, it's probably within our capital plan. And then at the end of um, the next couple slides here, we'll be voting on a, a resolution to adopt this 10-year plan. So as you can see, large spreadsheet. Uh, I want to point out, you have a copy of this in front of you, a couple items here. So um, the first is where the revenue is located. That was one of the things that must be included in our 10-year plan. On the bottom two rows, you'll see the fund balance section. On the screen in front of you, I've highlighted where the revenue is listed. That will either be via levy or aid in that 01 fund. So that's our general fund. The other form of revenue is our 06 fund, which is a little below that, which would be our construction fund. And you can see the revenue this there would be from our bond sales that we completed earlier this school year. The other item that was bulleted in the introduction of LTFM was our health and safety projects must be included in this plan. And those would be under category one towards the top. And these are all separated by their UFARS code, which is our accounting codes. So you can see that's all broken down in this larger spreadsheet. And I apologize, it's hard to get on one page. So at a glance, here's a summary of what's in this 10-year plan. Over 10 years, our estimated revenue would be approximately 13 million. Our debt obligations over that span, which would be our payments for our bonds that we sold to finance our mechanical projects um, that we just started this year, would be approximately $3 million. So the projected average annual revenue would be just under a $1 million, $987,000 and change. Within that plan, about every year we're spending about $233,000 on health and safety. So just to give you a general idea of what this 10-year plan includes, about $750,000 um, or around that each year will go to other projects within our LTFM allowable expenditures. So when we see the large um, revenues, it may seem like a lot, but as you whittle it down and include the health and safety, um, it does kind of come down to about $750,000 a year that we have in um, revenue to uh, help fund our LTFM projects. So the rest of that revenue would go towards this category five that's on your spreadsheet, which would be more of your um, mechanical systems, building maintenance, um, roofing, um, those types of categories as you can see in front of you here. So the last thing just to keep our near future in sight here, I've broke down what our fiscal year 25 projects will be within this 10 year plan. And these are projects that will result in an expenditure of greater than $10,000 next year. Um, I also did not, I don't believe I included on here our, uh, almost a given, our mechanical projects that were funded through the 06 fund. So um, we have um, next year at Hammer Complex, we'll be updating some irrigation controls. At Halverson, we'll be uh, replacing restroom fixtures and plumbing. At Hawthorne, we'll be doing some updates to the media center. Um, and. Um, repairing or replacing some kindergarten restrooms and lockers. At Lakeview, we'll be looking at doing some uh, parking lot changes and repairs. At Sibley, we have some trees and landscaping we need to address. Um, a handful of projects at Elberly High School. And then at Southwest Middle School, our loading dock is in disrepair. And so the timing should be nice once we get through our mechanical projects that are all coming in and out of the building through that loading dock we will address the loading dock at that point. The concrete's just crumbling off and falling apart. So there's some of the larger projects for next year. And then the last couple slides for you this evening. Um, I think these were interesting to look at as we, as we built and put the plan together, um, trying to make sure that we're allocating these funds to different categories and um, addressing our, our building needs. Um, so just shows which types of projects we might be looking at. So roofs and envelope will be about 28% of our LTFM funds. Our HVAC and indoor air quality, about 20%. Interior projects or classroom projects would be about 18% of these funds. Exterior surfaces like parking lots and sidewalks, 12%. 
and that health and safety portion is about 19%. And then other tasks, other projects in there that didn't quite fit one of these categories would be only about 3% of these funds. And then this is another, I thought, interesting diagram, but just showing um, where the projects will be occurring. Um, and I was just crunching some numbers earlier looking at square footage of our buildings to see how close we were. Um, and it's fairly close, actually. So um, you can see by building where the funds are going to be um, directed over the next tier, 10 years. So with that, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to try and answer those this evening. Otherwise, I ask that we uh, move to uh, approve our fiscal year 25 long-term facility maintenance 10-year plan. Yeah, Paul, I'm, first of all, this, this is very helpful, this, these tables and charts down here, just to kind of condense it. I just have one question, but as far as the hammer complex goes and the need to upgrade the irrigation control, so that wasn't part of the work that was done as far as the field and the... So what we're finding is, it, good question, yes, um, Director Schindler, we, um, the current system to operate all the zones at Hammer Complex would take, I think it was seven or eight hours. And so we're not able to water as deep as we need to in the, the optimal times of day. And as you know, activities are taking place at Hammer Complex in our afternoons. It's not the healthiest to water overnight. You wanna try and hit that morning window. And so we can't z control the zones as best or as well as we can. So we're looking to replace our controller, which will help us m water multiple zones with the amount of plumbing out there. So kind of an in-depth answer to your question. Uh, an upgrade would really help us make sure that our facility is being cared for properly. Yep. Paul, can you show the board what are some of those health and safety projects? I see it's about 150 in the budget. What are some of those projects? Yeah, um, so when we look at our um, health and safety, those are things like elevator inspections or um, playground surfaces, or I'm just looking at my list right in front of me here, um, and pool inspection, bleacher compliance, um, lead and water testing, which we'll have coming up this school year. Um, we have a consultant with IEA, which help us with any of our safety projects that we're working on. Um, so there's a, a very in-depth need for our health and safety funds, and this helps us finance those. Um, but those are some of the few um, anytime we work with asbestos, which we all know is um, unsafe, we have to go through an abatement process, and that can be a pretty hefty cost. That falls under the health and safety category. Um, Bloodboard pathogens and this sort of training all falls into that category too. So, as I traditionally will say, what a monster to work with, and. As um, your predecessor, and you do uh, you do a wonderful job. I I wish being intimately um, looking uh, from my other uh, line of work at different private entities. It would be nice if they had a good plan like this over ten years. And when they combined it back in in uh, we said fifteen, if I remember too, it was it, it was you just never knew where to put these projects, and you're always looking for money. Uh, the only question I have is. Isn't, isn't there a revolving loan fund too if we don't do a bond issue or we don't have money that we can borrow at a lower interest rate for these kind of updates or am I wrong? Well, there's, there's different financing options, yes. Um, but this is funding that if we didn't take part in the program, we would lose out on. So it's, it's a no-brainer. I think all um, schools in the state try their best to make sure they're part of it. So. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, Director Durban, Executive Director uh, Walsh, and their work with this. It is about addressing the needs now, but also having a vision uh, moving forward, because you can't put it off, because what happened, that just exacerbates any type of, of a situation. There will be things that come up. An example of the health and safety uh, Director Olson asked about is you know, Halverson's playground. They they had pebbles at, in their playground, which to us, it's, it's not... Uh, the same across all buildings. So that's something we needed to address. But I want to give accolades to Director Durbin. He is out in the field, and we are out looking at these different situations and looking at the needs. And it is about visioning that out and, inten and intentionally aligning our resources
to ensure we are having the very best daily experience for our students, staff, and within our community. So thank you for your work on this. Yes, thanks. Um, we now, we've been requested to take action on this facilities plan, the 10-year plan. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been motioned and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you, Paul. All right. We're moving on to um, our budget and uh, both the, the final budget for 23-24 and the preliminary budget for 24-25. I bring those at the same time because you're going to talk about both of them, but they are two separate action items. Yes, they are. Uh, and the reason we do it this way and needing two separate action items, the FY25 budget really springboards off of the final FY24 budget. So... Uh, it's really necessary to get that approved before we move to FY25. So I will pre be presenting the 23, and again, thank you, uh, Chairperson Nelson, Superintendent Wagner, and the rest of the school board for allowing us to make this presentation. It is uh, statutorily obligated that school districts approve a, a preliminary budget for next year by June 30th. So. We do appreciate the opportunity, but we are also obligated <laughs> to do this. So starting with the 2324, um, you all have a budget book in front of you, and that will give the same information. I will t want to start off by saying uh, there really are no surprises here. Uh, we, as you will see here in just a moment, uh, we're projecting to end FY24 about exactly where our revised budget was. The reason we do a final budget, uh, even though we just approved a revised budget in, I believe it was March, is now that we're so close to the end, uh, we, there's a really uh, quite a few things we can really drill down and get as close to our actual. Uh, there's a lot that will happen between now and really the end of September as far as audit entries and uh, a variety of things. So even though we're looking here at June 17th, uh, we still don't have absolutes for the final budget, but we feel like this will bring us closer. So we did. We are anticipating about $661,000 more in revenue than our revised budget kind of a variety of different things. We received a county payment plan that we, it was part of actually the um, levy payments that we normally would have gotten last June. We got this one in July, and the auditor just wanted us, wanted us to restate how we put that payment in. Uh, their interest rates are better than they have been, and so we were able to increase our anticipated interest earnings. As the year goes on, we get a variety of gifts and donations. We don't always uh, revise those budgets, but now that we're at the end and pretty much at the end of when we would anticipate getting those items, we put the budget to the actuals there. Uh, we received a couple of new state grants, uh, primarily the non-exclusionary discipline grant and the Minnesota MTSS grant. A portion of those will be uh, paid in this fiscal year and then in coming fiscal years. And then just uh, redoing some of our federal grants and anticipating that we will see a little bit more than, than originally projected in, in some of those revenues and expenditures. And then on the expenditure side, you know, we could see now that our special services transportation costs are gonna be uh, more than we had originally projected. Uh, the good thing about that, those are fully reimbursable by the state, so we should see some additional revenue. We had some technology things. Uh, some of this came out of our ESSER funds, um, and so those are paid for by our, what I'll, you know, COVID monies, ESSER funds. The, the next one, TRA, PERA, special funding. This is really an audit entry that is made at the end of the year. And we recognize an equal amount of revenue and expenditure, and the auditor helps us work, work out what this entry will be. Um, 
I had, however, had a greater number in the revenue budget than I had in the expenditure budget, and they really need to be equal. So this is just truing up that expenditure. And then, again, some additional federal grant expenditures. So when we approved the revised budget in March, we were projecting an 11.94% fund balance to end this year, and now we are looking at an 11.98%, very little difference. Uh, community service funds, again, some minor changes just to better reflect our year-end totals. Oh, I think I need to, why don't you run that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm sorry, I should have brought this up earlier. So this just recaps what was in your budget book and the things that I just explained. Again, now anticipating that the final budget will be 11.98% fund balance. Okay, community service. Some very minor changes to better reflect our year-end totals. Uh, building construction fund, you'll see when we get to the spreadsheet, we did separate out the safety construction funds. That was based on that bond that we issued uh, a year ago last November, and then our new LTFM bonds that we just issued. Uh, and then no changes to other funds. So then what we have, and again, uh, we understand that this is difficult to read, but this is what we are actually recommending that you vote on. So this is the general fund portion of the budget. As you can see within the general fund, we have a lot of restricted areas. Uh, funding sources that can be used for um, very restricted purposes. Toward the bottom, the largest line you can see is the unassigned. That's where the majority of our operations are funded from. And then moving on, we've got our budgets for food service, community service, building construction. And you can see on the building construction, we did delineate the safety projects and the LTFM, the long-term facilities maintenance projects, uh, debt service, and um, we have one scholarship that falls into what's called a custodial fund, no changes to our self-insured or health insurance fund, uh, or our OPEB. So we would ask a, if there's any questions, and then B, uh, our recommendation would be to approve this final 23-24 budget. Any questions on the final budget proposal for 23-24? Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, Motion we're going to move. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so we're going to move to the preliminary budget, and I'm I'm having Paul present this. Uh, he and Kaylee Grissom, our business services coordinator slash controller, really did the bulk of the work uh, on the on the general fund budget for next year. As we are, you know, starting to uh, kind of cross train uh, with a lot of our the things that we do in the business office. So. With that, I will turn this over to Paul. All right, thank you. Um, and I must say, it's truly a, a team effort um, between um, Kaylee Grissom, myself, and um, it's been an absolute pleasure um, being mentored, if you will, by Executive Director Walsh. She's been uh, very helpful for myself, and it's a pleasure to sit up here alongside her this evening. So as we look at the preliminary 25, uh, budget. Um, we will do the same thing at the conclusion, ask for approval of the uh, fiscal year 25 preliminary budget. So we'll start out with some highlights, uh, front loading some information uh, before we uh, really dig in. So one uh, item of note is that we are projecting a ADM uh, membership of 40 less than we had last fiscal year. So a slight decline in enrollment. Um, also noting here that our federal funds decrease by approximately $2 million. And um, that will be reflected in both revenue and expenditure. That will be essentially a wash, if you think of it that way. Um, those are due to our programs, our ESSER programs and our U universal grants uh, programs being completed. Um, we noted in our finance committee meeting um, this afternoon that there may be some uh, federal program funds um, trickling into this fiscal year, and we will reflect that in our revised budget should 
uh, the need be there. And then also a highlight for this uh, preliminary budget is just the 2% general education formula increase for fiscal year 25. All right, so this pie chart here provides a little bit of a visual for us. Um, one thing that I, I think is important to note is that our state aid is the largest portion of this pie chart in the form of 80% or approximately 81%. Uh, percent. Um, and you'll also notice the federal funds um, decreasing slightly. And our local levy portion uh, of 12% is staying about the same as prior years. So that is uh, consistent there. All right, so getting to our general fund expenditures, um, and this is uh, the most significant of the funds here, um, these uh, or most significant items here. Um, one thing I want to um, note is that the first line says actual contract settlements uh, with the exception of our support staff unit, which we're uh, entering our negotiations with at this time. But those actual settlements provide us a better prediction of what our um, fund balances or expenditures will be. So after we've settled, we now have those values. Um, also noting our 7% health insurance premium increase. Um, I believe you were briefed on this increase and approved this increase at a prior meeting. Um, the utilities budget, um, approximately 5% increase there. We noted at a finance committee meeting as well that with our mechanical upgrades and projects um, taking place and the addition of solar in our schools, we may see a de uh, you know, less need for a, a more expenditures here. Um, but with utilities increasing at the time, um, it makes sense for us to increase this in our budget so that we're not surprised um, if those realized savings aren't as much as we foresee. So again, um, we'll reflect in our revised budget any changes that are necessary with that. Um, also listed here in our general fund, um, increased property and workers' comp insurance budget, uh, increase of 14%. Um, I believe this was in a board, eight from, board update from Executive Director Walsh in a, a prior, um, last month. Um, so it should be, again, no surprise. Um, but that is something that we will realize as an increased expenditure. And then you notice the federal expenditures uh, decreased by $2 million there. So within the revenue and expenditures, um, those will be um, a wash there. And the budget adjustments due to enrollment decline that we spent some time on in a study session in a previous uh, board meeting, uh, those are reflected in our general fund as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, and sorry, I missed the, so then as, as we were hoping, um, we will see our projected fund balance here on our preliminary budget of uh, over our 12%, so 12.05% in the general fund. Again, another visual here. This um, will show our expenditure budget uh, broken down by our object code. So the one thing that we really want to point out here is that our salaries and benefits is approximately 80% of our um, expenditures. And um, this is similar to as we've had in the past and also um, similar to most schools in the state. Actually, if you look at most schools' budgets, it's approximately 80%. All right, the other notes, items to note here, so our food service fund, um, this information, our, our budget's uh, really provided by Chartwells um, there. Our community education fund reflects our Tiger Cup program changes, um, and um, the debt service revenue and expenditures um, just support those payments to our debt services. The one item of note here that I'd like to elaborate a little more on is our internal service fund, our health insurance, um, there's a slight increase in revenue. This is due to premium increases, um, and those premiums go into this fund. Um, and we've also experienced a decrease in, or we hope to experience a decrease in claims, um, as this year we had a very um, high year, um, out of ordinary number of claims. So we hope that that comes down to earth a little bit, or we project that it will. It was an unusually odd year. So um, as we look at these tables, um, these are what we will be approving this evening. So again, there's a lot to digest here. Um, <clears throat> I guess at this point, this looks this first page on the screen is your general fund. And the next slide uh, shows your food service, community service fund, 
And note that building construction funds separated by that safety projects and the LTFM projects as Executive Director Walsh noted in our final budget for 24 as well, and our debt service fund. And there's our scholarship fund, that custodial fund, the self-insured internal service fund, and our OPEB. So um, one other note as we um, ask for your approval of our preliminary budget for 2025, um, and I don't know, do you have a slide for that last one or not? I don't think so. The factors impacting? Oh, I Okay. So as we go into that um, final vote and we wrap up our presentation this evening, just wanted to note that declining enrollment is the most pressing challenge facing our district um, and our finances as a district. Um, and the majority of the decline is a result of incoming kindergarten classes that aren't keeping pace with our outgoing senior classes. And um, an analysis of birth rates in our county is supporting that trend. So it's important that as we move forward, we continue to adjust our staffing to reflect our enrollment um, as we move forward. And that's just healthy practice of any school. So um, I guess at this point, at this time, we ask to, for approval on the preliminary 25 budget. Thank you, any discussion? Angie. Uh, just one comment, I wanted to say I appreciate that the preliminary budget is actually, if my understanding is right, less than the budget that we just finalized for this last school year. So I know looking at the budgets over the last few years, there has been a, an increase, a large rate of increase in our budgets, and it's nice to see it level off and actually go down a little bit. So thank you. Any other comments or questions? Neil. Declining enrollment figure you just read, read is that uh, based on the incoming kindergartners as opposed to this. Uh, is there, uh, the uh, formula provides for more aid for seniors than kindergarten. So is, so is that, that, that decline yeah. in enrollment somewhat mitigated by the fact that seniors are in fact worse now? <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Um, Grades 7 through 12 are weighted as a 1.2. Right. So if the basic formula is $10,000, which it's not, um, then grades 7 through 12 would actually be $12,000. Mm -hmm. And grades K through 6 are weighted as a 1.0. So yes, um, seniors are more valuable. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they're not more valuable, obviously, but they do bring in a, they do bring in more per pupil than our K through six students do. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Ren. Just as a follow up um, on the declining enrollment, and that's a conversation uh, the mayor and I are having with Alita is how do we continue? It's, it's that three legged stool. You have to have child care, we have to have employment, we have to have housing. So how are we working as a community to build that forward? You know, the 18,000 using that as just our, as our city, as um, population, it's, there's been a shift in terms of, of those and aging up and then not having the younger children moving in. So again, we have to create that housing. And I know the mayor spoke last week at a meeting I was at and positively about some of the new uh, not only housing coming in, but working strategically with uh, the child care and how do we solve, work collaboratively to solve this. So we have to really get build our families, um, support our families where they are, but also recruit our families in. I'll just, um, d just to confirm, all under salaries, that includes all of the uh, settlements, the bargaining unit yes, settlements, so this, and yeah. and also the proposed superintendent salary yes. of 3.5. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I would entertain any other questions or comments. I would entertain a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you very much. I'll use Neil's expression, having exhausted the agendas. 
we would, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone.